Okay, our next elasticity is income elasticity of demand. Hopefully by now things are becoming very easy and you can see a lot of correlation or symmetry between these elasticities. Well now we're just looking at the responsiveness of quantity demanded when income changes. Now we know when income increases, okay, for a normal good, that will shift demand to the right. Okay, for an inferior good, demand will shift to the left. Now we want to know, well, how much will demand shift? How much will quantity demanded change in terms of the shift? All right, so the actual definition, we now use Y, okay? In economics, income is the letter Y. Okay, capital I is investment, small I is interest rate. So we use Y for income and economics. So YED measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded given a change in income now. So we're not looking at price, don't get confused now. Okay, price is gone, we're now looking at income. Okay, so the equation is just like before, but now we just have Y, income at the bottom, instead of price. The percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. I'm now going to stop doing calculations. I think after the PE video, it's pretty obvious how to do them. So we don't need to, you know, kind of uh, lambast the point too much. Okay, so now, remember, with PED, our figure would be negative. Whereas with PES, our figure would be positive. We explain why. Now, with YED, we can have either a positive or a negative figure. And the sign is very important. Okay? So we have to stick signs into our equation to make sure we get the right signs at the end. Okay, what do the signs mean? Well, if you get a positive number at the end, it means that you've worked out that the good, okay, you worked out that the good you're working with is a normal good. Whereas if you have a negative number, the good you're working with is an inferior good. So remember your definitions of normal and inferior good. Normal good, when incomes increase, demand shifts to the right. When incomes fall, demand shifts to the left. Normal relationship. Whereas inferior goods, when incomes go up, demand shifts to the left. When incomes go down, demand shifts to the right. So inferior goods, you could say own branded, uh, own branded products, okay, in supermarkets. So buying Sainsbury's cornflakes, okay, you could say it's an inferior good. Okay, bus travel, okay, or just public transport in general, inferior goods. Whereas normal goods, you could say you know, cars, um, maybe designer clothing, okay, things when you get richer, you want more of them, okay. So that's the, that's what you can expect. If you get a positive YD figure, you work with a normal good. Negative figure, inferior good. Okay, and exactly the same as before. Okay, if you, <coughs> if your number, if your YD figure is greater than one, we have an elastic relationship. Okay, less than one, inelastic. Now, in truth, yes, you can use elastic and elastic to talk about responsiveness, but with YD we can go a step further. Okay, for inferior goods, you can maybe classify them as elastic and elastic. In truth, it's very hard to define whether inferior goods will be elastic or inelastic. Okay, so again, when we worked out normal or inferior, ignore the signs and then use these to work out elastic and elastic. Alright, inferior goods, whatever, that's fine. But for normal goods, we can go one step further. Alright, so for normal goods, to interpret the figure, we now look at greater than one and less than one to determine what type of normal good they are. So, if you have a normal good, if you have a positive YED figure that's greater than 1, it's elastic, we would see on that good is a luxury good. Whereas if your normal good has got a YED figure less than 1, we would call that good a necessity. And that kind of makes logical sense. Alright? So, you've worked out your normal good is a positive relationship. If you want to work it out from the equation, it kind of makes sense. So, when income increases, positive, Quantity demanded increases, normal relationship. When income falls, quantity demanded falls. Negative, negative, gets you a positive. Okay, that's why you get a positive number. Okay, and you can work the same up for inferior good there. So think about it, your income goes up massively. Okay, income goes up massively, and the quantity demanded of a good goes up more proportionately. Okay, so your, your uh, demand for that good is really, really responsive, given the change in income. Alright? Well, through that, there must be a luxury. Okay? Simply because your income has gone up by a lot, you want a lot of it. Your income's gone up, you now want lots of it. Okay? It must be a luxury because income has been uh, a massively determined, a massively uh, important factor in the purchase of that good. Whereas for necessity, your income goes up. Yes, you still want to buy, but not by very much. Okay? So your demand doesn't change massively, even though your income has gone up. Okay? So it must be a necessity. Alright? 
You don't flock to buy just because your income has gone up. Meaning you might have been buying it before anyway. It's a necessity good. Okay, so that's how we can classify normal and inferior goods. Alright, so greater than 1 simply means all. The curve will shift by a long way. The curve shifts to the right if income has gone up. For a normal good, the curve shifts to the right by a long way. If it's a necessity, the curve doesn't shift to the right by very much. It still does that. Okay, so that's YAD for you. There really is nothing else to say on YAD. Very simple. Alright, last one to go, cross-price elasticity, and then we're done. Thank you.